Good evening. Um, I'm Delegate Mark Corman. I work for Senator Lee. Um, I, obviously, I have a lot of questions and criticisms, but I also want to give you know credit where credit is due, particularly on Metro. Thank you for your partnership. Uh, they have a long way to go uh, for Metro to work, and I look forward to you or your designee being on the board to help uh, get them there. But the dedicated funding was really important, and has it makes for a very nice page in the CTP. So thanks for your uh, partnership with so many of us on that. Um, to my uh, friend Administrator Quinn at the uh, MTA, thank you for the purple line. Uh, I would just say communication, communication, communication. Uh, as you know, when it was ramping up to construction because of legal issues, it was uh, particularly problematic. Uh, and I think there's you know, more to do to get better, although it's definitely on the uh, right track, if you'll uh, forgive the expression. Um, Senator King and I sent you a letter uh, not long ago about um, making sure that MTA and WMATA uh, and Mark are all sort of working hand in hand uh, together. And you know, the charm card you mentioned in your remarks is a very nice thing. Unfortunately, it's not interoperable with uh, WMATA. That's a step backwards, the previous charm card was. Uh, and so I think anything we can do to keep uh, our systems uh, interconnected, I think, is uh, a good thing. Similarly, you know, it used to be when there were uh, Mark Train problems, you could ride WMATA for free. Um, we have some influence on the WMATA board, uh, and so it'd be great to try to put some effort into, um, into restoring that um, partnership. Uh, to Administrator uh, Slater and his team, um, you know, I think uh, we appreciate Andre and, and the renewed enthusiasm for community engagement, and I really appreciate Administrator Slater, your very direct and personal involvement at our River Road Whitman High School situation. I've, I've been on the emails, uh, and I know you've been uh, really on top of things, which I appreciate. We need to, you know, start moving forward those solutions, but really appreciate the uh, engagement. I would just emphasize to, to both of you that, you know, we need to remember that the goal is to move people, not cars. Uh, now, there are people in those cars. Uh, and when they're in the cars, you know, we want to be able to move them, but some people take bikes, some people walk, some people take transit, and so we need to keep in mind for all the modes, but I think SHA uh, has, a, has a, a bit of a legacy problem about uh, cars. So I know you've, uh, we've spoken about this before, and so I appreciate you uh, keeping that in mind. Uh, now the topic of the hour, uh, or the three hours, uh, I-270 and I-495. Um, so, Mr. Secretary, before our great partnership on WMATA, I was part of a group that went round and round with you on transportation scoring. I know you remember that issue well. It I took do. up two years of our lives that you and I aren't going to get back. Um, the number one thing I heard from you during that, uh, during many hearings and meetings and public statements and ridiculous letters, was local input, local input, local input. Uh, this is my hobby, believe it or not. So I actually watched some hearings last night and have all sorts of quotes from you about the current process of local government and public input. The uh, proposed scoring system being problematic because it removed local input. Uh, the system being very much based on local input. Uh, we use prioritization letters that we receive from the counties. Locals understand their needs better than necessarily MDOT does as a state entity located in Hanover. It's my opinion, this is you, Secretary Ron, today, and apparently it's been the opinion for quite some time that in that locals provide value to the process in understanding their needs that are specific to their county. Uh, I'm a lawyer, so if you need the citations, I have them all <laughs> written down here. Uh, we get priority letters from counties in which we choose from their priorities, sometimes the number two or number three, because that's what we could afford, not number one or number two. There are letters brought to us about the projects that were being considered. I can tell you that Prince George's and Montgomery County prioritized transit projects over highways. I have the letter that went to you in uh, 2017 from Montgomery County, and I don't see this mega project uh, on it. I also saw on the back of the CTP, we now have a scoring system. Uh, we were able to refine it in a way that I think was uh, agreeable to the department. It wasn't repealed. It was, re it was reformed, and the, the world didn't end. And when you look at the scores, 25% of the projects being scored are not selected by locals. They come from M.SHA. Now, first of all, the fact that it's M.SHA is very telling because that shows that of all the modes up there, the one you're prioritizing is obviously uh, the roads. And obviously, you know that I think we need to be uh, uh, looking at other modes and not just roadways. But I think it's fascinating that 25% of the projects being scored are not from local input. The, the local input you were hammering away at for two years in front of the Appropriations Committee and in other um, forms. So I'm, I'm really concerned about that, and I think it uh, really calls into question the process, which we've heard a lot about. And I just, on the process, you know, obviously the EIS, the NEPA process is defined in law. Uh, but normally, the press conference, the Rosh Hashanah press conference, would have been about the locally preferred alternative, the outcome of that process. It wasn't. It was before the scoping. The governor already announced the end of the process before it even began. Right? He said what the project is going to be. So all these alternatives, it's, it's, a, it's a game. 
Uh, I mean, normally when you do an EIS, the no build is the one everyone knows that's not what you're going to do. But the other ones are legitimate contenders. In this case, that is completely not the case. The governor has made clear what the projects are. One, sec one second, yeah. Mr. Secretary. I, I have watched the press conference. I have heard him talk. I have seen his uh, materials. Uh, he made pretty clear what we're looking at doing. Uh, in fact, you even said earlier that there's no room for transit. One of the alternatives in the document is about transit. So you've already uh, uh, predetermined the outcome of the process. I think there's questions about tolls, obviously. One of your talking points is lowering tolls. I know it's uh, my friend Administrator Reigert's done a fine job lowering the, the, the tolls of the Chesapeake Bay and other places. This is a whole new toll road. So you can talk about putting toll dollars back in people's pockets. You're coming right to the other pocket to take much larger tolls out based on all projections. I, I think it's a very flawed process if it's a process at all. And I think, you know, this is not a surprise to you. This is not news to you. I don't think you're hearing anything tonight you haven't heard in letters and seen in, you know, in media articles. But I think you need to hear it again and again. And again, I will, I want to refer you back to your own words regarding local input. This is the local input. So I hope you will listen as you move forward. Well, the one thing I can tell you is that first off, just because the governor has said he wants, you know, a particular vision, and we are going through that process to see if we can deliver upon that going through an environmental process. We are going through the NEPA requirements and we will have to wait and see if at that point uh, that when we can conclude the NEPA process, what is the record of decision, whatever that is. So the, the fact is we have to go through NEPA every step of the way as required by the federal government. And that is what we are doing. There is nothing pre-decided on this. Uh, there is, of course, a vision. And we will see if the vision is going to fit with environmental requirements and the needs of a transportation system within this area. Um, your comment about local input and local input Two years ago was the first, the, the project they wanted was Purple Line. We've delivered on this. The governor delivered on the Purple Line. Uh, the Purple Line was proposed in, you know, in cooperation and complementary to each other improvements to 270, 495. Um, so far, Purple Line only addresses the one side of it, not the other. And locals uh, hardly ever talk about improvements to interstate highways because their priorities tend to be those items that are, uh, are those issues that are raised locally. So it is traditional here in Maryland as well as the rest of the country is that the, the state agency will normally take the lead uh, on on improvements to interstate highways. And quite honestly, I have a hard time believing that, you know, a huge majority of people do not see the needs to improve travel within the national uh, capital region. It's, it's bogged down, it's headed for even worse. Uh, you know, it, it's a parking lot 14 hours a day right now. Mr. Secretary, thank you. That's a straw man argument. The goal, the, no one is saying we don't do anything about traffic. I would encourage you to look at the two letters that have been addressed to you in your time here, local priority letters from Montgomery County, which both talk about interstate improvements on 270 and 495. So your, your point about the counties not including those things is incorrect. I appreciate the Purple Line. I, I, maybe I, my thanks was too directed to Administrator Quinn. Thank you, because I believe you were in there fighting for the Purple Line. But I also know the governor didn't say it's number one priority of Montgomery and Prince George's County, so we're going to do it. It was a big song and dance to get him to follow through and not give up $900 million in federal funding. So I just let's remember the, the history of that. But thank you, well, because you were important to making sure that happened. That, I think it's going to be a good thing. Yeah, but again, that's not the point. The point is something has to be done. I don't consider that a straw man at all. I believe it's a, a quite simple Everyone agrees. No one is arguing that nothing needs to be done, Mr. Secretary. It's a question of what and how we do it and how we move people and whether it's more targeted things, emphasis on other modes, uh, emphasis right. on other modes along with this. Uh, I know I see my, uh, my Senate colleagues about to cut I'm, me I'm off. I'm asking so you to just let him finish so his Mr. sentence. Mr. Chairman, I, I won't talk anymore. I'll let you uh, have the last word, and thanks for being here. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're here. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, if you want to, 
to shape what happens, you have to participate in this process. And that means the people here, which they have done, right, have participated in the process, providing input into this NEPA process, and it will go through uh, those things that are required by law, and it is open and transparent. I don't know any other way to tell you it. It's what we have done has been open and transparent. It will continue to be open and transparent. And we ultimately want to find the best solutions that we can undertake to help break up this congestion within uh, the national capital region.